The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. When Judas had gone out from the group gathered in the upper room, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been, if God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, the end of the school year is upon us. Yes. The end of the school year is upon us. Yes, yes, yes. And for some of you, this means graduation. This means graduating, graduating, graduating. You know, on to the next thing in life, graduating. And as you graduate, this is a time also of tears and wiping away tears. For it's at this, this time of year is the time that fits the words of Jesus where he says, I am with you only a little longer. In this season of transition from school to summer, there are going to be tears. Some of those tears are happy tears. Some are sad tears. Some of those tears are mad tears. And as the tears come, as they come, and as the God of Revelation begins to catch those tears as promised, I want you to thank God for tears. Because these tears help us to feel the reality of life. The reality of this year, the, the life that you share, these relationships that have been so significant to your life. Those tears help to bring that out and remind us. There's something holy to being able to pause and to appreciate the classes and the coach and your new abilities and all of the good things of this year. And so as those happy tears well down, thank God for those good things. But there's also something holy to being able to grieve the things of this year that have not been so good, that broken trust or... Um, or the bruising words, or those things that you wish were different, because all of us have those. And being able to grieve those is very, very important. Your tears, as they come down, they alert you to this holy time of transition, this holy time of joy and of sorrow. So consider those tears, and the situations and the people involved with them as they come this time. This time. And may it be that those tears for you become an occasion to pray. An occasion to pray for God's love to surround those people and those situations that are held in your tears. And the God who is close enough to wipe those tears from your eyes is the same God who is close enough to hear and to love and to sustain you through those tears. Now, when I was in college, when I was in college, I had some tears. I had some tears. I went to one of our fine ELCA colleges. Sorry, you guys aren't going there, but you, know, you can transfer maybe, no pressure. I went to Lenore Ryan University. You can write that down if you want to. Lenore Ryan, we can get you hooked up. But it's in Hickory, North Carolina. And uh, I went there, and when I went to Hickory, Hickory is different than where I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's different than Marietta. There are so many Lutherans there. It's ridiculous. You pick up a stone and you throw it, and you hit either a Lutheran or a Lutheran church building. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But when I was there in Hickory, North Carolina, I found an ELCA congregation, one of our congregations, and it's called Mount Olive Lutheran Church. Mount Olive Lutheran was wonderful because they had worship. They had people that loved college kids, but they also fed college kids, <laughs> which is really nice. Look for a church that feeds you because 
It's awesome. Now, Mount Olive was different than my home congregation. My home congregation has Gothic architecture. Mount Olive is more like modern art, a little different. At home, my home congregation, there was communion served every Sunday at both services. At Mount Olive, well, it was served every Sunday, but it was at either the first service or the late service. So it was kind of hard because I had to figure out, okay, now which Sunday is it? Do I have to get up early? Oh, I got to get up early. Ah, but you know, Jesus is worth it, right? Yeah. yeah. So I had to figure out my schedule. It was different than my home congregation, but Jesus was there. He was there, and he spoke to me through the preaching, and he sustained me with the gift of Holy Communion, even if I did have to adjust my schedule just a little bit to make sure I was there. Let me tell you, this gift of Holy Communion, it made Christ's presence real for me right there in the middle of my college experience. I knew that God was with me in college because every Sunday, as I held out my hands, the pastor would declare the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And just about every Sunday, I received communion in, co in the company of this dad. Uh, he was a giant, he is a giant of a man. I mean, the guy's this big. Eric West, he's like a big teddy bear. He's just like, college kids, I love you. Wonderful guy, wonderful guy. So Eric was the guy that I sat next to in worship. And he would come with me to communion and we'd go from there. But there, there was this one Sunday when I was in college that I was feeling really homesick. Not just a little homesick, a lot homesick, really homesick. But I didn't say anything about it because, you know, I'm this college freshman and I got my act together, right? Yeah. I was trying to live up to that perception. Well, Eric figured out that I was homesick. And so what he did is he took me from the communion table out to the lunch table. He took me from communion to lunch. Because there, and there I was sitting at the lunch table, this college freshman who was doing really great in all my classes, who was playing soccer for my college team, was trying to hide the tears behind this sub sandwich that I was eating and just inhaling in Eric's presence. And it was at that moment, at that moment, that what was revealed in the book of Revelation was coming true in my life. God was making good on his promise to be with me and to wipe every tear from my eyes. And he was doing it through Eric. So that's why what I'm going to tell you in just a second is really important. In this next phase of your life, if it's college or if it's an empty nest or if it's a new job or if it's sixth grade, whatever this next stage in life is for you, I want you to do something for me. I want you to find your Eric West. Find your Eric West. Now, it doesn't have to be a giant of a man. It could be somebody different. But find your Eric West. Sit next to him in worship. And then go and receive communion together. And do it every week. Every week. I know the pastor's where you're going. As you go and do that, it's an opportunity to deepen your relationship with Christ and to see Christ sustain you in this huge time of transition. Even if it is you have to get up early, maybe Eric's going to be a good person to say, hey, what's up? Let's go. Even if you have to work through differences in architecture or time or music or schedule, do what you got to do to work through those differences to make it happen because Christ is worth it. And then after you go to the Lord's table together, then go to the, to the lunch table together. Your homework and all those projects and stuff, it'll wait. Don't worry. Don't make that excuse. Worship, lunch. Go to lunch with your Eric. Because in those times and in those places, you are doing holy work of allowing God to sustain you, to wipe your tears, and to renew your life in that moment. So graduates and families, church, this is a season of tears. Some happy, some sad. Trust your tears to your God.